Right now, we continue to discuss the uh, the weekend for the Baltimore Ravens and what it means moving forward as they sort of try to push towards being at least breaking through in a loaded AFC. Joining us now, a man who I know is very high on what it is the Ravens accomplished during the course of this draft. He is a former NFL QB and, of course, a man you see on NBC, PFT Live, and all sorts of places. He's our buddy Chris Sims. He's back with us on GCR. Chris, it's Glenn and Paul. Good to chat with you, man. Thank you for taking a couple of minutes for us. No problem, guys. What's up? How, how's everything going? Everything is going well, and, and it's nice. I always talk about how everybody likes to feel pretty, and every Ravens fan feels very pretty because everybody on the planet seems to agree that the Ravens were big winners during the course of the weekend. Yeah, 100%. I mean, it, it's really hard to argue that. They definitely one of the – three, four teams that I would look at to go, they won the draft, definitely. I mean, you know, of course, the safety we know, special in Hamilton, very, very popular type of player, a needed type of player for this day and age in the NFL. Offenses are multiple. You could be two tight end sets, one play, they go no huddle. Both tight ends can split out a receiver and are awesome receivers, and you need guys that have versatility like Hamilton. Traditional safety, can play in the box almost as a sub linebacker, can play nickelback. He's awesome. I mean, Linderbaum, the center from Iowa. I mean, come on, definitely one of the best O-linemen in the draft. Very important. Uh, underlooked position at times. But, like, to me, one of the safest bets there are. You got your starting center for however long you guys want him in there in Baltimore. And then you get a little, like, David Ojabo. Nice little – yeah, you guys are desperate for an edge guy, but I think the value was too good to pass up at pick 45 in the second round. And then I love Travis Jones, big guy D tackle. The big tackle from Minnesota's got potential. Jalen Armour Davis, the corner from Alabama, was one of my five best corners in the draft. He has a few little injury history, but damn, he's six two. He ran four three, and no one ever gets open against him. I couldn't believe he was on the board there. And then I also like the two tight ends. So I know I just said a lot. No. But obviously, yeah, I'm one of those guys that drooled over the draft a little bit. This is – so, Chris, I, we are in agreement about almost everything you said, right? Like, and I, I, yeah. I don't know that they're all going to pan out, but I think there's right. every reason to believe that the Ravens got quality football players, particularly those first three-round picks, which we all know is – is sort of what makes a bait breaks a draft, right? Everything after that is a little bit more of a crapshoot. But those first yep. three round picks, they, they seem to have have done as well as you could possibly do. I I think it comes back to the, and I've been asking this question since then. For as good as I feel about what the Ravens did in the draft, the secondary question is: Do I feel like they got closer to breaking through in what is now one of, if not the most difficult division in the NFL? And obviously an insanely loaded AFC and and that's the conversation I'm struggling with not to say that there was a guaranteed way they could do that this weekend but I think it goes back into the when we credit them for being true to the board taking best player available it are there times where maybe a team would be well suited to say the hell with that we need to come up with an edge rusher right now if we're going to have a chance to go out and beat the joe burrows josh allens and patrick mahomes of the world well yeah i i hear you there you know it's a tough balance it's hard to have it all i i understand that you know there's also other ways to create pressure as far as the defense is concerned and i know we don't want to blitz against great quarterbacks and do that but I think you're going to still, even without Wink Martindale, I mean, Mike McDonald's still going to have things that he can creatively bring to the table. Uh, Adafi Way to me, is a big-time edge pass rusher. And it's not like Jalen Ferguson and Tyus Bowser are bad. They're not great pass rushers. Bowser are a little better than Ferguson, but good edge football players. But, you know, again, you can have it all there. So I don't know. I mean, you know, as far as addressing the edge, I think they took a guy that they felt like, okay, is extremely talented. They know him, of course, with Mike McDonald being up in Michigan, and they're willing to wait for, for the reward and maybe not have a guy that's 100% until late in the football season. But I think when you just talk about team building, where the team is at all together, you still got a lot of great pieces on the team. Now you've added a young nucleus to go with what you got. Yeah, the AFC is brutal. But, damn, I mean, I have a hard time thinking, like, if Lamar Jackson stays healthy down the stretch last year, you guys get in the playoffs. Damn, if the team in general wasn't so beat up with some of the star big-time players, you get in the playoffs. So I still look at the Ravens and go, it's one of the better teams in the AFC. And especially with that coaching staff and the physical style play, 
and I always say the pillaging of the baddest mofos on the planet every year, um, I think they're sitting in a pretty good spot. I understand your concern maybe with an, another edge guy. I, I understand that. And, and the other thing, too, Chris Sims is with the here on Glenn Clark Radio. And the other thing, too, of course, being Chris, they, they ended up losing Hollywood Brown. And, and given the circumstances, we all think they did pretty well to, to make the trade that they made if they felt like they had to trade Hollywood Brown. But the problem right. is you still have to look at this wide receiver core, and it's the old thing that we've been talking about in Baltimore essentially forever, and say, is this group good enough? And I love Rashad Bateman, man. Like, I think Rashad Bateman, talent-wise, could be the best receiver the Baltimore Ravens have had since Anquan Bolden. But that being said, it's it's that's what they've got. They don't have another proven wide receiver on the roster. And as much as we say, hey, they want to run the ball, that's what they're going to do, at some point, and we also say that Mark Andrews is kind of a glorified wide receiver at tight end, but they don't look around in this conference and see what other teams are lining up. What the Ravens are stacking up at wide receiver does not nearly match up. That that has to be a concern for me. Well, uh, yeah, to a degree, sure. I mean, yes. But you, again, you know, you, the team's never going to be perfect, and this is one area that just it's not going to be. Right. It, it's not. You know, receivers are not going to be knocking on the door to go, oh, let me come there and play and watch Lamar Jackson run around. Yes, awesome. No, this is – they're going to probably be a team that's going to have to take a different approach if they're going to continue to play this style of football. You're, 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 I'm not saying you're wrong with anything there. I get it. Devin du- DuVernay, I mean, he's a talent, a weapon, but there's not a lot of proven commodities on the roster at the receiver position. It makes me wonder to a degree, and I think you guys, and me, Florio and I have talked about this a lot on PFT, I, I think you guys are always going to be the, in the market for – the Sammy Watkins of the year to get on your team every year. It didn't help. So, yeah, I know it didn't help. So whoever that's going to be this year, Julio Jones come in, you know, late June or something like that. I could certainly see that be a possibility for Baltimore. But here's the other thing I'll throw out, maybe just a different angle. And I'm interested to see maybe if this is their approach. Maybe they realize there's a, an issue with the receiver thing to the, to the examples you have pointed out, the offense, Lamar Jackson, receivers not wanting to go there. Maybe that's why they drafted two unbelievable pass-catching tight ends later in the round, later in the draft. Maybe that's the route they're going to go. Maybe they're going to go, you know, screw you, here's Mark Andrews, like I talked about when I broke down Kyle Hamilton. Screw you, here's Mark Andrews, here's Charlie Kohler, here's Isaiah Likely. we got three tight ends on the field. Ooh, we can run the ball and mm-hmm. overpower you and give you issues with three tight ends and Lamar and, you know, Dobbins at running back and Bateman as the one receiver. And then you have to worry about, oh, let's get big linebackers in there and stop the run. But then I said, like I said, the next play is the same personnel, and you said it. Mark Andrews, glorified wide receiver. So with these other tight ends, they really are. They're pass-catching tight ends. Maybe that's the style of play they're going to go to this year. Uh, I have thought about that. George Gotsey, the new tight end coach from New England, was in Miami. He understands how to use tight ends. It's crossed my mind. I'm interested. I don't know that, but – Maybe that's a route where they get a little more offense uh, on that side of the ball instead of the receivers, like you're pointing at. And, Chris, to be fair, we know when they had three tight ends on the field in 2019, they were, I mean, my God, they were unbeatable uh, in moments. But it, but, but can you win a Super Bowl doing that, I guess, is what the question keeps coming back to, right? Can... Well, it's going to be all that. You guys are the ultimate can you win the Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. Can you win? You know, I heard, like, Lamar made a – you know, a little bit of a comment during the right. year like, or on the, uh, the LeBron thing, LeBron James thing, right, where he followed up and said, yeah, there, there is a stigma. I'm paraphrasing. I might be wrong on the black quarterback. And, you know, I didn't think that was necessarily true. I love Lamar Jackson. You guys know that. But I want to be no, 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 no. There's no stigma. Nobody's questioning Patrick Mahomes or Russell Wilson or any of those guys. What is questioned is the style of play that Lamar Jackson plays. It has nothing to do with the color of his skin. Now, you know, most most running quarterbacks are black. I mean, so that's just the fact of the matter anyways. But it's not about the black quarterback. It's about what you're talking about, the style of play. You guys are the first team in the history of the NFL to go this route and go, you know what, we're going to play defense and be really creative running the ball and have a quarterback that's electric running the football and then – we're just going to kind of try to keep you honest with the pass game to a degree. And that is new for the NFL. Again, we get to the Final Four, the Super Bowl every year. It's guys that can make throws in the pocket as a quarterback. Burrow, Stafford, Brady, Mahomes. 
You just keep going down the list. It doesn't matter. That's the style of play that's proven to get you to win a Super Bowl, to win a Super Bowl, because the defenses, of course, are so great as you get later on in the playoffs that the running quarterback has a hard time running and winning the game that way. So you guys are the ultimate experiment as far as some of this stuff we're talking about here. Chris Sims with us on GCR. I, I mean, I, I, I'm a little uncomfortable saying there's no stigma at all to the black quarterback, Chris. Cause I mean, yeah, like, I hear you. Yeah, I, I understand. I, 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 I get that. I, yeah. I don't mean it that way. I understand. Yes. What I'm saying is I don't think it's necessarily skin color. I think it's necessarily more the play style that's really the, the part that is questioned in the NFL circles, right? Nobody's looking at it and going, oh, the black quarterback. No, that, that's not fair to say. Nobody's, everybody thinks you can win a Super Bowl with Deshaun Watson. Everybody thinks you can win it, like I said, with Mahomes or Russell Wilson or other guys too. But, yes, there's the stigma of the running quarterback, and mostly the running quarterbacks are predominantly black. I don't mean – I'm just trying to paraphrase mm-hmm. a conversation. I'm certainly not trying to judge too much. I, I, I understand that. Um, yeah. Chris, the, so, so you mentioned the idea that it could be Holy – and this is a thin group that we're talking about that's out there. There's Julio Jones. There's Jarvis Landry, who I, I'm still confused as to why he's still available uh, yeah. because he's the one guy that you look at and say, yeah, I, I think I'd take that guy. There's Fuller. There's Hilton. It, it gets really thin really quickly. Yes, it does. It, is there something there that you would try to do if you were the Ravens, or is it time to sort of say, you, you know, to your point, you got your tight ends, you got the young receivers, they're going to have to sink or swim. Th- this is the group that you got. They're, you're not – it ain't really worth doing the Sammy Watkins or the TJ Hushmanzada or the insert name here experiment again of just grabbing a guy for the sake of grabbing a guy. Well, I, you know, I, I, yeah, I mean, again, the Sammy Watkins thing didn't work out quite the way you want. But, you know, I, I don't think that's wrong to go along those lines of thinking of, hey, yeah, veteran, you know, coming to the end of his career journeyman. Yeah, can this guy help us, you know, as far as the things we've talked about, be the proven commodity? Hey, it's a third and four. I want a guy that I can trust that's going to read the defense and know exactly how to run this little intricate route here for us to get the first down. Like, that's where I think the veteran presence, Julio Jones type of guy can come into handy. But it's risky. And you certainly, yeah, you're not looking for a long-term future here. Jarvis Landry would be amazing for the Baltimore Ravens. I think Jarvis Landry, the issue is he's just, he's overpriced himself on the market right now. Mm -hmm. So no one wants to pay that. He's not a big-time separation receiver, but he's physical. He'll help you in the run game. And to me... He's the guy that you got to help get open a little bit, but you guys have that offense. Oh, hey, make Dobbins this way. Here goes Jarvis Landry out the back door behind the line of scrimmage. Oh, Lamar throws them a little, you know, bootleg pass in the flat, and now he makes people miss with the ball in his hands. Uh, I, I, I think that does have some logic to me. The price has to be right. Um, but I think, you know, we're on the right track here. I think we're seeing that this is kind of going to be the formula of the team. And I think they're going to try to, you know, go this route is what, what you discussed and what I've discussed. So how, how do they, you know, Chris, how do they break through? W- what does this come down to if the Ravens are going to try to break through? And what we're talking about, this is, this is murderer's row they're dealing with now in the AFC, yeah. right? Right. How do right. they break through this group knowing that there's, you know, it, it, it's not going to get easier, I don't think, in the coming years. These are not aged quarterbacks. They're going to be on their way out. Those are the guys in the NFC. Um, how do they break through this group and finally find their way back to a Super Bowl at this point? Well, they're close. You had a heartbreaking loss in the divisional round, you know, two years ago to the Titans when you're the number one seed, or that was three years ago now. It's a team that I don't look at as far off. I don't know if I got the magic answer for you. I think they're in the process of, you know, you've made your team and your defense a little faster and explosive. You know, they're going to be a little more talented on that side of the ball. Uh, so that, that's a good thing. You know, offensively, I think, again, it's just can we stay healthy? Can Ronnie Stanley be healthy? Can we continue to stay creative in the running game, which I don't really doubt at all. I mean, that's, that's where, you know, the Ravens and, and uh, the, the offensive coordinator, and Greg Roman, are very good in that department. And then I don't think it takes, like, we don't need, to, we don't need Lamar to be Josh Allen as far as, you know, picking people apart or Aaron Rodgers, but it's just got to continue to grow and be a little bit better and, and, and more consistent. You know, again, even last year, Lamar's better, certainly, but we had some games where you just go, damn, Pittsburgh on the road? That's just, there's too many throws and plays that weren't, that's not good enough. The Miami game on the road on the Thursday night, 
you know, those are the games you look at and go, that's just inconsistent. That's where we need a little bit better quarterback play and reading the coverages and making the appropriate throw. So I think it's a little bit of everything along with the, you know, the continued development of Lamar Jackson. Uh, he is Chris Sims. Chris, what can we plug for you, man? Where are people seeing you? Where are they hearing you? What's, I know you're a very busy man. Well, I'm all NBC Sports. You know, we are on Peacock every morning, 7 to 9, Pro Football Talk. I do my Chris Sims on Button Podcast twice a week if you want to get in the weeds. And, I mean, it's just football. It ain't there for entertainment. We're breaking down players and teams and all that. I do that twice a week anywhere you get your podcast. Uh, so those are the main things. And, you know, I do Sunday night football and yep. all that in the season. But, uh, yeah, the Peacock is where, where you'll find me now. No more channels, you know. It's the – it's the app age. I'm on the peacock hey, app, man. dude. Hey, man. That's, uh, I, I know that world, my friend. That's uh, As a longtime radio guy, I've had to make an adjustment. At QB is how you follow him on Twitter. Chris, appreciate you taking the time for us this morning, man. Thanks for doing this. Let's talk again soon, all right? Uh, all right, guys. Be good. Have appreciate a good one. Appreciate you. Chris Sims checking in with us here on GCR.